All right, thank you everyone for joining us. Today we have Stan Collins with us, who is the co-founder of Directing Change, an organization that Elk Grove Unified has worked with for quite a number of years, but he's also a suicide prevention specialist. Stan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me and thanks for uh, shedding a light on this really important topic. Yes, so we all have been living through the current pandemic, but are you seeing an increase in suicidal ideation? Uh, with youth, it's not that we're seeing an increase in suicide ideation. We are seeing increases in people reaching out to crisis lines or the crisis text lines, uh, but usually it's with issues of anxiety and depression. And um, in combination, not just with the pandemic, but with everything going on in our society right now, it's not necessarily that we're seeing an increase in risk factors, but it really is we're seeing an erosion of protective factors, that connectedness, that bonding. Uh, meanwhile, there's plenty for any of us, youth or adults, to be anxious about. So uh, there's a lot of factors at play, but fortunately right now we haven't seen an increase in suicidality among youth. Okay, well, that brings me up to a webinar that um, Directing Change is hosting. It's called Suicide Prevention 101 for Parents, and it's to recognize signs and what to do if you see those signs in your child. So can you talk a little bit about what participants of the webinar will get out of the you know, important discussion? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, now more than ever with us being, you know, isolated and quarantined, parents are an even more uh, vital role in youth suicide prevention. So what we're really wanting to do, first off, is uh, alleviate a lot of the fears, reduce the fears that many parents have about talking to their youth about suicide. Uh, one of the most important things to know is that talking about suicide does not cause it to happen. Uh, that's been proved time and time again in research studies. What we also want to do is give parents the tools to set the table or create the space to have conversations about mental health, mental wellness, and suicide if needed. Um, so some of the things we're gonna talk about is how, you know, what behaviors to be concerned about. Um, you know, the word normal really doesn't exist anymore. So what, you know, but how do we still define those behaviors and what's, what's healthy and what's not? And then when, when there is any fear of suicide, um, to have that conversation. And, and one of the most common questions I get from parents is, well, when is the most important or the best time to talk to my kid about suicide. And I always tell parents when you're not at all concerned that your kid is having thoughts of suicide, we don't want to wait to have conversations on mental wellness or suicide prevention until it's a crisis. We wanna create that space so that we can start talking about the problems when they're little problems, not when they're overwhelming crises. Yeah, and you know, you and I um, discussed this a little bit earlier before we started the um, Q&A session about us both having a personal um, loved one that um, did succumb to suicide. So how can parents or anyone in um, a group of people tell if their child or their peer is behaving like a normal teenager or a normal person should in society or if there's something going on. Well, and I think that's really what we want to get to the heart of is that it's, you know, there are, there, you can go to suicideispreventable.org to learn more about the warning signs and attend a training. Um, we'll talk a little bit of the warning signs in the webinar, but what we're really looking for is for people to trust your instincts, is that you may not be an expert in suicide or suicide prevention, but you are an expert in people in your lives, especially your kids. Um, even if they're teenagers and, you know, you're starting to get into teenage angst, if something doesn't feel right, then you, if any part of you thinks that you need to have a conversation about suicide, then you need to have a conversation about suicide. That being said, I can't think of a more scary dynamic to have that conversation to worry about as a parent thinking about your kid being capable of this. And so our hope, again, is that we want people to be prepared and supported, but also as a, as a parent know that if you're not able to have that conversation, you need to find somebody who can, whether that's a school counselor, um, even during the summertime, many schools are still offering supports or connection to supports. Um, or maybe it's another trusted adult. Maybe it's one of their aunts or uncles, your brothers or your sisters. Or maybe it's a coach or a mentor. Um, but any time that we have concern that something isn't right, we have to you know, either identify or eliminate whether or not suicide is part of the issue. 
Okay, great, great insight there. But let's talk about how parents can talk about or start the discussion um, with their child about mental health and suicide. What tips would you give for that conversation starter? Well, I think for one, as parents, um, you know, the, the automatic is that we feel that we have to have all the answers right. We need to be able to explain this confusing world to our kids. And when it comes to mental health and suicide, uh, the biggest thing for as parents or guardians to get over is you're not going to have all the answers. And so create, you know, gen a gentle space, you know, maybe not go directly to, hey, are, are you having thoughts of suicide? Uh, maybe ask a question, hey, have any of your friends ever attempted suicide? Have any of your friends ever talked to you about having thoughts of suicide? And ask them, what was that experience like? How did they respond? Uh, as far as mental, you know, maybe start even before that, jump into a conversation about mental wellness and um, not just ask, hey, are you doing okay? But, hey, how are you feeling? Um, I've noticed this, or I know I've been really anxious and stressed uh, with everything going on right now. I know I haven't always been present. How are you dealing with everything? How are you, again, how are you feeling? Not just, are you okay? And um, really, the, you know, so we worry so much about saying the wrong thing and often we don't say anything. And the most important skill you can bring to that conversation is your ears and listening. And set the table and then let them talk to you. Great, great suggestions there. So what if the child or the children don't want to talk to parents about mental health or suicide? What tips do you have for that scenario? Well, I think for one, we, we have to be realistic with our expectations. We can't expect to have our very first conversation with our kids about mental health and suicide prevention to be just wonderful and they just open up and they feel safe and secure. You know, it's something that you're going to chip away at. Um, you know, there's many other important health issues that we talk to our youth about. And if you're only having one conversation with them about it, it's not going to be very effective. It's about creating the space, letting them know you're there, and letting those conversations grow and evolve over time. The issues that a middle school student deals with around mental health are going to be different than a ninth grader or a senior. Um, so I think for one, um, allowing it to be a series of conversations, not trying to pack everything into one. Um, and you know, so if they don't open up, follow up. Can, you know, I tell parents to be gently persistent in their conversations, but if they aren't the individual, I, I challenge parents to think about what would be some of the reasons if you were a kid that you wouldn't want to tell your parents about your mental health issues. You may not want to disappoint your parents. Um, you may be worried that they're going to overreact. Um, your parents, the kid might think that their parent is already having a hard time and they don't want to be a burden on them. So I think it's when we take our own egos out of it and we think about what are some of the reasons why a youth might not want to open up to their parents and say that it's maybe it's not me, maybe it's the dynamic and how can I make a healthier space for that dynamic to have some important conversations. And if not, again, as we said earlier, find somebody else, find a mentor, find a coach. Who is that person that your kid would be open to talk? Thank you, Stan. And one last question here. So who can parents turn to if they are concerned their child is thinking about suicide? Well, of course, the schools are one of the most, especially you there in Elk Grove, you have a really strong student support services. So I think parents often uh, hesitate to reach out to the school because they fear it's going to affect their child's academics or their opportunities to get into college. And it's really important for parents to know that those files are kept totally separate, that um, your child's academics and their mental health are completely separate, um, that the school is there and they can, they, you, you all can connect them to an amazing set of resources. Another thing that I would want to highlight is that many people don't realize that our crisis lines, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, for example, 800-273-8255, which will allow, uh, route you to your local crisis center. Um, they're not just there for people in crisis, they are there help to help someone identify resources for somebody who's just in distress or looking for some extra support. They're there if you're gonna have the conversation with your kid, you can call them ahead of time, they can coach you up. Or if you talk to your kid and you're a little bit scared and you don't know where to go, you can contact the crisis line and say, look, I just talked to my kid that told me they're having thoughts of suicide. What do I do now? And so there's a lot of different supports, either through the school or the crisis. Wow, that's a lot of very helpful information. Thank you so much, Stan Collins, who is a suicide prevention specialist, as well as the co-founder of Directing Change. 
thank you so much for your time and uh, hopefully you'll all be able to join us for the webinar on the evening. Yeah, and Stan, the webinar once again is called Suicide Prevention 101 for Parents, Recognizing Signs and What to Do, and it's taking place on June 18th at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. Thanks again. Thank you. Take care.